morning, everyone. Please rise for the call to worship. As God called to Moses from the mountain, as Jesus called the disciples to climb with him to the peak of another mountain, as the disciples stood in awe at the sound of God's voice, to worship in wonder and praise. Together. Everlasting God, whose tenacious love holds us, make our hearts the house of your truth. 
and make our minds the realm of your wisdom, so that our fellowship will become your dwelling place. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Let's welcome Pastor Ruben for today's message. Thank you, Song Kiam. Good morning, everyone. You are keeping yourselves healthy in the midst of this COVID-19 thing. Uh, we continue to pray for Singapore as well as for the world. We thank God for our government and all that. And the last thing we want is for us to be fearful and panicky and all that. Uh, you know, in the midst of all this whole virus situation, some in our office, church office, have taken to extreme precautions. Uh, and this is one example of what they are wearing in office nowadays. <laughs> no, it's just... I hope we don't recognize who that stuff is, but uh, well, uh, and no, that's a joke. You know, you realize it's a joke. Uh, we don't we don't wear this all the time in office. Um, it's just that day someone was just trying it out. You know, in case I read somewhere yesterday, uh, this person from another another Asian country came to Singapore, and I think it was a he or she. I can't remember now. Uh, they were commenting that they hardly see Singaporeans smile. Any of you come across the article? They said, how come Singaporeans don't smile? The whole country like very little smile. People very little people smiling and all that. Um, I think it's helpful for us to smile then. You know, there are benefits to laughter and to smiling. Yeah, especially in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy, not groanings and moanings and sadness. So, uh, why don't you take some seconds to turn to your neighbours and smile. Let's practice smiling. Show your teeth. It's okay. You are missing some teeth. Just smile anyway. Yeah. Okay, we are in the midst. Uh, we're starting this new series here, sermon series, a four-part series, four Sundays. Uh, we call it the snapshots or uh, just little occasions of uh, Jesus' ministry. And we are starting with this one today, calling all disciples from Mark chapter 1, verse 16 to 20. Just four very short, simple verses, straightforward as well. Do you realize, do you know, I, read a, I came across this article as well. Researchers had, a, they did some well, research and they did some findings. And they found out that when we are exposed to information or new knowledge, there is a tendency to forget. In fact, if I recall correctly now, the title of the article was uh, the, the Pattern of Human Forgetting. So if I'm exposed to, or I'm, I, I hear something, or I read something, I come across a new piece of information or knowledge, and it becomes mine, I will tend to forget it by about 50% within the hour if I do not actively use it. In a sense, yeah, to summarize, put it another way then, if I'm exposed to, if I come into contact with information or knowledge, good ones, if I do not respond to it actively by using it or applying it, I would forget 50% of it within the hour. And if I do not do something with it, apply it, or actively respond to that piece of information, or knowledge, within 24 hours, I will lose 70% of that body of information or knowledge that I was exposed to. And within the week, a week rather, if I again do not actively respond to it by applying it or by using that piece of information and knowledge, within one week, I would have lost up to 90%. I would have forgotten up to 90% of what I had read or what was spoken to me or taught to me. Which means this. The purpose of writing books, I mean, I'm not talking about comics or fictional books and all that, but the purpose of writing books that contain lots of useful and positive information and knowledge is to convey that information to the readers so that when we receive that piece of information, we can somehow retain it and actively respond to that information by using and applying it. Same thing, different context now. If the greatest speaker comes, uh, greatest teacher or lecturer on any subject matter comes and they 
lecture or they speak to us and deliver and convey important information and knowledge to us, the purpose of all that delivery is so that we can receive this knowledge, retain this knowledge by actively responding to it, either by applying it or using that information and the knowledge. So, no matter how beautiful or how grand or how attractive looking the books may be, no matter how skillful a person is in delivering the information to the people, no matter how skillful he or she may be, if the information that is delivered is not retained and actively responded to, the entire thing, all the books, or all the hours and minutes spent speaking and teaching and lecturing would have gone to waste. Why? Because within an hour, without actively responding to it, we have lost 50% of it from forgetting. Within 24 hours, 70%. Within a week, up to 90%. And this has to do with what Jesus, uh, the calling of the disciples today, and rather Mark, what Mark chapter 1, verse 16 to 20 is. It's not an exact parallel, but there is some similarity to that how people forget information and how when Jesus called the disciples, the kind of response they gave. And with this, hopefully, prayerfully, we can then apply this short four verse story to our lives. It's just short four verses. And in the book of Mark, you realize the shortest gospel in the first four, I mean, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John is the shortest among all four. And it's not because Mark doesn't have anything to say. Or it's not because the rest of the things are not important. Or Mark has forgotten so that he doesn't have many things left to put down in detail in his reenacting or in his sharing of his perspective for Jesus. It's not about that. But if you read Mark, you realize something that in his brevity, Mark chooses to be short and concise and to sum things up precisely because he doesn't want us to get um, distracted by all the details that we miss the essential points to what he's trying to bring across. You know how sometimes um, if you put something important in the midst of many, many, many things, people tend to miss it. It becomes like a treasure hunt. Find that particular jewel with all these other things around that are, that are just shiny and all. It takes a while to decipher where that, that precious jewel is. But if you put a precious diamond or jewel just on a plain floor, concrete, and nothing else around it, the stuck contrast causes you to zoom in on it very immediately and then to understand, to spot it. In the same way, Mark does it. And one of these important points that his brevity tries to bring across to the readers of his gospel, two things, the authority of Jesus and the other one, the active response of those who are in the authority, in the realm or in the influence of the authority of Jesus. Put it this two ways then. One is the authority of Jesus and the other one are the actions of those who respond to that authority. And with that, let's look at the four verses right now. Mark chapter 1, verse 16. As Jesus, he was going along by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon. We come to know him better as Peter in all the other Gospels and later on also. So it's Simon Peter. That's why you hear him called as Simon Peter sometimes. So he goes along the Sea of Galilee and he sees Simon Peter and Andrew, who was the brother of Simon. And they were casting the net into the sea, for they were fishermen. So what's this scene here? What's going on down here? Well, here is a picture of the Sea of Galilee. And one of those boats that you will sit on when you go and visit the Sea of Galilee. The reason why uh, P Peter or Simon and Andrew were casting their nets there is because they were fishermen. And if you understand the Sea of Galilee area, this was a, back in those days, there was a thriving fishing industry in that area. Everybody went there to fish. Um, even today, there's fishing still in that area, except for, I think, if I remember correctly, 2010, there was a ban on two years, ban of two years on fishing because the stocks were running low. 
But even today, there is fishing there. And if you go to visit the Sea of Galilee in Israel, um, you will also, besides taking a boat here, uh, because on the, onto the waters, enjoying, spending your time of worship, feeding the birds and everything, you will also eat this very special fish in an area called St. Peter's Fish. It's actually tilapia. Fried tilapia, but it's just tasty and fresh. You have that as well. So this is the Sea of Galilee. Now, people call it a sea, but it's not exactly a sea. It's actually the largest freshwater lake of Israel. It's about 11 kilometers wide and 21 kilometers long. But besides being a place where there was a fishing business going on, and even today some tourism and all, no, but tourism because of what? Because it was also a very central location to Jesus' ministry. Jesus' ministry centered around the Sea of Galilee, around this area. And that's why tourists go there, or pilgrims go there. Why? Because on the Sea of Galilee was where Jesus walked on water. You see that spot, um, don't mind the photo please. The spot on, the, on, on, your, on your left, about one meter from the boat on your left, that's where Jesus walked on water. I'm just joking, I'm just joking. Really, don't, don't, don't take out your cameras and snap a picture. I don't know where he walked on water, but, but I just know this is the Sea of Galilee. No. But Jesus walked on water in the Sea of Galilee. Jesus calmed the storm, the Sea of Galilee. Jesus also, speaking to the disciples who have been fishing the entire night, couldn't find a single fish. He says, put your nets down on the other side. And they had a huge catch of fish, the Sea of Galilee. Not on the sea, but along the bank somewhere, Jesus also multiplied food. The loaves and the fishes. And he fed 5,000 people. And all these things were centered around the Sea of Galilee. But all those miracles, all those doings and ministries of Jesus, as much as when we hear them, it wows us, as much as for the people who were in that period of time going through and encountering Jesus in all His might, in all the miracles, they would have also celebrated the power of God. There is something that's about to happen right now that would trump and they would deserve greater applause and celebration than all those miracles. And that's this thing that's about to unfold before our very eyes in these few verses. Jesus sees Simon Peter and Andrew, and then he speaks to them in verse 17. He says, follow me and I will make you become fishers of men. He sees them and he says, follow me. And I will make you become fishers of men. I know we place a lot of significance on these words, fishers of men, and rightly so. But what we want to see is that Jesus doesn't want to just make us fishers of men, even though we're all supposed to share about the goodness of God. But if we understand now correctly, and we all do now, that that area was a fishing industry area, and Simon Peter and Andrew, his brother, were fishermen, it makes absolute sense. If Jesus comes up to you and you are a nurse and he says, I'll make you a fisher of men, you'd be wondering, what in the world is that? But if I'll make you someone who will nurse others to restore others, it makes perfect sense. So let's not put so much import into these few words that it gets us all distracted. The point here is this. Jesus is calling them to follow him. And by following him, he will use whatever they have and those things that they do not realize they have use it for His glory and bring them to places. Bring them to places of physical places as well as places of ministry that they can never imagine. Follow me. Follow me literally says this, means this, come after me. You see, back in those days, the rabbis or the teachers would never go out to call for disciples. That wasn't how they did it. Back in those days, the rabbis or the masters or teachers would sit somewhere and people would come knocking on their doors asking if they could learn from them. But Jesus here, as always in his character, as always the big giver of grace and being generous and reaching out to others, he goes out and he calls, he invites, 
he gives his hand of invitation and says, come, won't you come after me? Follow me, and I will use you in a powerful way that you can never, ever imagine. I wonder what would Simon Peter and Andrew's response be? Verse 18 tells us what occurs next. Immediately, they left their nets and followed him. Jesus and his authority comes. Follow me. And here we see Simon Peter and Andrew responding actively in action to the authority of Jesus. They immediately left their nets and they went after Jesus. I hope you begin to see the similarity now of forgetting things and this responding to Jesus' authority. If not, we'll come across about, we'll come about to it again in a while time. Not just this. On the same occasion, as we'll see in verse 19 now, going a little further, he sees James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were also in the boat mending the nets. So going a little further was just along the Sea of Galilee area, also around the same thriving fishing business industry area. And now on the same occasion, he sees James and John. What happens here? In verse 20, he tells us, immediately Jesus calls them, the same way he calls Simon Peter and Andrew. And then, immediately or without delay, they left their father, Zebedee, in the boat. And that's why we know it was without delay. They responded immediately to the authority of Jesus with an active response, with actions. They left their father, Zebedee, in the boat with the hired servants and went away to go after Jesus. And it ends here. Just four verses telling us about how Jesus calls four of the twelve disciples. And what should stand out in, in the midst of everything else because Mark has been brief in this. He pulls out all those details that he thinks we may get distracted with. And what stands out now is the authority of Jesus. In his graciousness, he steps out and he invites people to go after him, to follow him. And then the active response of these four, Simon Peter, Andrew, James, and John. They responded to Jesus by immediately obeying the word that came to them. In, in a sense, I would say this way, they immediately applied the word of Jesus in their lives. And they went after him. They followed him and became disciples just like that. And if you, understand, if you look at this, again, verse 20, if you don't mind. They left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants. Okay, this is not calling us to, to ignore our parents. Huh? This is not teaching us that our parents are not important. Nothing to do with that. But again, it's just to tell us how important it is to place the authority of Jesus first and foremost in our lives and what it means to respond actively. For for James and John to drop everything here, it means to leave behind a life of familiarity, a state where everything was comfortable, we know what was going on, we know what our future will pan out. My father, Zebedee, has hired servants. There's probably a business that's going on down there. If I carry on in this business, things will be comfortable, familiar. I know what my future looks like. But they dropped everything to go after Jesus. You know what happened to these four? Peter, Andrew, James, and John, among all the 12 disciples. Peter went all the way to Rome. He was used mightily by Jesus. He preached his first sermon and there were 3,000 who were saved. That's how Jesus used him. Andrew, church tradition tells us he was also going out talking to people about Jesus Christ. And tradition tells us he traveled from Galilee in Israel, that sea area down there, that lake area, all the way to Russia, sharing about Jesus Christ. 
John, he became the bishop of Ephesus. He wrote also letters. And he was the beloved of Jesus Christ. What about James? Well, God seems to use all these ones in amazing ways. What about James? Well, James, we are told in the book of Acts, was executed by King Herod. He was executed on earth by King Herod, but celebrated in heaven for his active obedience to the word of Jesus to follow him. And this is what I mean by among all the miracles in that area in the Sea of Galilee, the fishes, the walking on water, the coming of the storm, the multiplication of all the food, then all these things will pale in comparison to these four verses telling us about the response of people to the authority of Jesus. Why do I say that? Because all these other things are this nature. They're objects. But when it comes to human beings, God never forces, God never snaps a finger and we just have to obey. But here, right now, you see four people immediately responding to Jesus. And there is definitely something that the heavens will celebrate and will be wowed with. The point is this. The disciples' calling bring to us a story not about a specific calling for something. doesn't mean that this story is for those who are called to become pastors, called to become evangelists or to go into ministry full-time, only for those people. No. As believers of Jesus Christ and God, all of us are disciples. Whether we feel like it or not, or whether we respond to his word and to his call or not, all of us are his disciples. And right here in these four verses, they show us what it means to be a disciple and follower of Jesus Christ. That there shouldn't be any hemming and hawing. That there shouldn't be any hesitation or reservation whenever Jesus leads us and calls us to do something. There shouldn't be any pushing away and waiting but the moment Jesus, as our Master, as our Lord and as our Saviour, says, do this as my disciples and as my followers, we ought to also actively respond and if practical, immediately respond and put that word into application and into practice. And that's why I say there's a similarity between information and this. Because when we receive information, and we do not actively respond to it by using it or applying it in our lives, we tend to forget it. In the same way, Jesus as our master and we as his followers, we will be receiving words of guidance. He'll be telling us things to do in our lives or not to do in our lives. Whether it's a change of career perhaps, or whether there's some area that we need to just allow him to do the, the work of sanctification and change us and mold us a bit more in that area. can be any of these things, but if we do not receive that word and retain it by actively responding to it, guess what? After a while, that voice of God that calls us to obey him, to allow him to do things in our life, to use us for his glory, to change us or to step out in a new direction, allowing Him once again to use us. All these voices will become a bit quieter and we might even forget it because we become so used to pushing away or to silencing that voice that after a while, whenever Jesus calls us as His Master, His disciples to do something, we just push it because we don't immediately respond actively to it. We just push it. And after a while, we forget it and after a while, we even train ourselves to bury that voice. Four disciples responding immediately. We've got four, five hundred here. How many of us respond to the call and to the voice of Jesus? How many of us here would not push and to wait, but to respond? I had the pleasure of having a very short conversation, but a conversation nonetheless of two of our worshippers in this church, two members, two worshippers in this church. 
and they were sharing uh, in a short span of time that we had, they were sharing how they felt God had been calling them. They are really disciples. They are followers of Jesus Christ. And following means every day we follow, not just one time. But as in the following, in a journey with God, they felt in recent times, God speaking to them to step out of their current jobs to go into ministry full-time for Him. And they've done just that. They've taken steps to obey that. And that brought so much encouragement. That is really a mark of a disciple who is, who is willing and desiring to follow immediately the voice of Jesus. There have been others also in my years of ministry speaking, speaking to them and hearing their stories on how not stepping out to, to go in a different direction in life, but, but how God has been speaking to them that saying, you know, this, this thing that you have in your life, that's not right. And you need to stop going along with that. It's not doing good for you. It's not good for you and your family and for those who love you. Stop. And the voice of God came and they responded actively to that and said, God, yes, with your grace to help me to be disciplined and to have control, I will read this thing in my life and allow you to mold this thing out of me. Being a follower of Jesus Christ means that all facets of our lives ought to respond to the authority of Christ actively, with action, and with obedience. And so with that point here, and we leave ourselves with the question, what is God speaking to us? What is Christ calling us to follow Him in currently in our lives? Has there been something that we've been pushing away? Waiting, hemming and hawing, trying to make excuses. Not yet, a while longer. It's too uncomfortable for me. I'm not sure what the future may hold, so I'm holding back. If that's us today, could I just encourage all of us to respond like Simon Peter, Andrew, James, and John, without delay, immediately we respond to the voice and to the word of Jesus as followers with action and in obedience. That's what we are called to do as disciples. Will you please stand? I'll give you some time now to, this is not about a this is not a, a hunt or giving you a time to, to dig out all those things that you feel they have been wrong with God. No, it's nothing to do with that. It's just really, what is God calling you to do that you may have been pushing away? Or even right now, the voice of Christ may come and say, follow me this way. You've been following me all these years and I'm going to take you on an adventure now. There's something else I want you to follow me in. And you're hearing Him or sensing Him but you also not respond without delay, immediately follow Him. So whatever it is now, wherever you are in your walk with Jesus, do not remind ourselves so we can dedicate ourselves anew that we are disciples of Christ, which means we follow the voice of Christ with action and in obedience. Father, we thank you for your eternal patience with us, Lord. For your graciousness, for your mercy. Lord, we know that um, we're not perfect disciples and followers of Christ. And there have been moments where we have pushed away that voice or we have buried it. Or we have trained ourselves to forget it. Forgive us, Lord. Lord, if you stand here today in your presence, uh, we thank you that your word, just simple four verses in the Gospel of Mark, remind us and place before us freshly what it means to be a follower, to respond in obedience, Lord. 
So God, I pray for all my brothers and sisters and myself that we will be disciples who will be quick to respond to your leading, to your guiding, and to your love. Help us to be disciples, not just in name, but in action and in obedience as well. This we pray and we ask in the name of our Master and Saviour, Jesus. And everyone say, Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Let us continue to meditate on the message through this beautiful song. second and fourth Sunday, we come to God with our prayer and praise items. So for this Sunday, we only have um, prayer items. Okay, so um, just to take note, because of um, the current arrangement of our entering into the sanctuary and the exiting, um, the pre prayer and praise items we place in between the two doors at the main entrance of the sanctuary. So if you would like to fill in any of the forms, you will need to do it before entering because if not, once you enter the sanctuary, you will not be able to head out through the doors in between to fill out the forms. So the blue ones will be the praise items and the pink ones will be the prayer items. So blue for praise and pink for prayer. So let us go to God in prayer for these um, prayer needs. So I'll just give us a moment. Let's take about a minute or two. And you can, if you feel comfortable, you can speak out these prayers. 
But let us individually come to God and commit these prayer items to Him. So, Father, we just want to thank you that when we commit our prayers to you, they never go unheard, that you hear us and you're faithful, you're faithful to bring it to completion, God. So we just want to thank you for all the prayers uttered this morning, and we just want to really just trust in your goodness. All this we pray in Jesus' most precious and holy name. Amen, amen. Okay, as we're all standing, let's just take some time to just um, look around, move around, and exchange God's blessing with one another. No shaking of hands, okay? And But we'll just, yeah, do the waves, do the, the, the Chinese style of putting your fists together. A very good morning and welcome to the Fire Methodist Church. It's really great to see all of you here. Okay, so at this point in time, um, I'll just be um, getting us to identify visitors and newcomers who are here with us and helping us to give out the welcome packs will be the connect group by the name of Yishun. Okay, no prizes for guessing where they meet. Okay, now... Um, so that I don't miss anyone out, I'll, I'll do this section by section. If you're new with us, just do us a favor by raising your hand and giving me a wave, okay? So in these two sections here from the front to the back, is there anyone here with us for the first time? Just do me a favor by waving at me so that we can give you a welcome pack. Is there anyone? These two sections here. Anybody? Just give me a wave of your hand if you're here with us for the first time. Okay, if not, I'll move on to the next two sections, okay? How about in these two sections? Is there anyone here with us for the first time? Just give me a wave of your hands so that we can welcome you and recognize you. Okay, if for some reason you are new, you're here with us for the first time, but um, you did not raise your hand, we still want the privilege to connect with you, okay? So um, just do us a favor by um, um, approaching any of our ashes in the yellow jacket so that we can just hand you a welcome pack, okay? Um, and if you are holding a welcome pack today, Help us to fill in the visitor card that's found inside the welcome pack and drop it off at the information counter which is located downstairs on level one. Okay? Um, so for the next segment of our service, we'll be taking the offering. Now, I have a little bit of instructions for offering, so just bear with me. For offering, it is an act of worship for us to express our love and trust towards God and everyone is invited to participate in this act of worship. Okay? Um, we would be taking, we'll be trying a different format um, this week, okay, and we'll be um, taking the offering from the back row to the front, okay. So everyone at the front here, stay seated first. The ushers will be giving instructions in terms of the rows to go up. So people along the side aisles, just take note of the ushers instructions and you can head up here to when um, they have briefed you. So we'll begin with the sections, the last row at the gallery and then we'll move forward. And then um, everyone will be walking up from the side aisles and the center aisle will only be used for returning to your seats. Okay. Um, also, please bring along your personal belongings with you. And for those who have difficulty moving to the front, okay, if you're not able to come forward, just raise your hand and our ushers will come by with an offering bag to collect the offering from you. Also, for this period, we are also allowing... Um, Online giving, e-giving, okay, for this QR code, please take note that you need to open your banking app in order to access this QR code. So if you use your phone camera or a generic QR code scanner, this is not going to work, 
Okay, so please take note that you need to open a banking application in order to read this QR code. Okay, and so um, the instructions are here. These instructions can also be found online in terms of the little remarks that you'll need to put for um, pledges and tithes. Okay, if you would like, you can actually take um, just a, a, a photo of this slide so you can go back and read it as well. Or if not, you can access it from online as well. Okay, so um, right now, um, I will invite the ushers to take their positions to get ready to, uh, yeah, um, facilitate the offering segment. And we would be singing our offering hymn seated down so that we can see the ushers and have their instructions taken more clearly. Okay? Yep, ushers, you can proceed. Let us proceed with our... Okay, let's... Yeah, that's right. I was looking at Pam and she had this really big eyes and she's like, <laughs> I'm supposed to pray. I almost forgot to pray. How could I? Let's pray. <laughs> Father, we just want to thank you that um, you are the giver of all good things and that everything we have comes from you. So even as we give back to you what you have first given to us, we just pray that you would bless all the givers of the offering. You bless the use of the offering as well. And we just commit all of this to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Rock of ages, clap for me. Let me hide myself in thee. judgment throne, rock of ages, clap for me, let me hide myself in thee, rock of ages, rock of ages, clap for me, let me hide myself in thee, let the water and the blood from thy wound the sight which flows be of sin the double cure save from wrath and make me pure not the labors of my hands can fulfill thy lost demands could my zeal I've known, could my tears forever flow, or for sin could not atone, thou must save and thou alone, nothing in my hand I bring, simply to the cross I cling. Make a 
Now we'll move on to family news. Okay, so for the first family news item, we have the YF Easter. That's right. That's a really cute um, logo of an egg there. Okay, so now this is an, a YF Easter event for youths. Okay, youths, I would leave you to um, leave it for your understanding on what the age range might be. I don't think I qualify for youth activities anymore. That's really sad. But yes, it will happen on the 11th of April, and that will be 2.30 to 5.30 at the Botanic Gardens, okay? So that's a Saturday. It will cost $5 for registration, and it starts next week, as in registration starts next week, okay, on the 8th of March. Registration will close on the 29th of March. So do, um, do encourage any youths that you know to sign up for this event. It'll be a lot of fun. It'll be a lot of energy and... Yeah, just they will have a really great time together, okay? This event would continue even in the with, with this situation unless otherwise updated, okay? So stay tuned for updates and we'll hope to see you there. For the next item, it will be for our Jubilee Fund. Now, for the Jubilee Fund, let me get this page. Okay, now, the Jubilee Fund is specially created for our Jubilee year to for outreach activities to impact the Tupayo community. So this inclu and includes our mission activities as well. Now, beneficiaries for the Jubilee Fund include the poor and needy in the Tupayo community, as well as the Rough Sleepers Ministry and the planting of churches in our regional mission fields. You may contribute to this fund by cash, check, or e-payment. Payment instructions as well as other details about the Jubilee Fund can be found on our 50th anniversary microsite. Now, you can find the microsite either at this link or you can just go to our general church website and then you would see the nice banner over there for our 50th Jubilee you know, activities and all that. Just click on that and that will link you to the microsite. So, yeah, there are a few ways you can get to that. Okay, so we look forward to your generous contribution. The rest of the items in the bulletin are for your prayer and participation. If you would like someone to pray with you, do come forward after the service and our prayer team will be here to pray with you. And if you are here today and you would like to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we would love to pray along with you as well. So just come forward and we'll lead you in a simple prayer. So let us all stand right now to glorify God with our gifts and our voices. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him.
please remain standing for the hymn of dedication. Guide me, O thou great Disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, will you not, not go and follow him? As you do so, the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Please be seated and remain uh, in the sanctuary till after the choral response. Mm -hmm. 